Hey friend, welcome back to my channel. I'm back at it again with another video. Today we are going to be doing this hair tutorial and you're going to be watching me slay this wig from start to finish. If you would like to achieve this bob, stay tuned and I'll show you all the details on how to. So today we're going to begin by actually bleaching our knots. I have another good video that shows in detail step by step how to bleach and tint your frontal. I'll link that right above here. The products that we're going to be using today will be the BW2 Extra Strength Lightning Powder, um, also known as Bleach, and the 40 Volume Developer. As you can see, I have a good consistency going right now with the bleach as far as thickness goes. And I'm actually really dabbing the excess bleach into the frontal. And we're working on a 360 frontal. All of the products that I'm using in this video will be linked in the description down below. And I really wanted to over process my hair because I wanted my uh, not to be extremely bleached just so it can help with the process of blending and, and matching up the hair with my natural hairline and as you see here another a neat trick to do is um, kind of covering up the frontal and 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 any closure really with foil because it kind of speeds up the process and makes the chemicals work a little bit better and you can also get a blow dryer and speed up the process as well so when you're done uh, the frontal will be hot and just keep your nose kind of clear because um, when I smelled it like a lot of the fumes came up and kind of burn the inside of my nose and my eyes so there was kind of a close-up of the knots and how it should look and here you can kind of see that the hair is um really extremely over processed and i i was actually going for that so don't don't think i messed up and here is why um you really can't even see any of the knots and later on we'll go back and dye um the hair so you've seen that black knot, that was what all the knots used to look like, and all of the yellow knots are what they are now. So here we are going in with uh, the dye. I actually don't know what kind of dye this is. I just seen it had a black girl on it, and I chose that one because I feel like it would work best with the hair. Um, yeah, I don't know, don't judge me. But it came with, um, the developer and it came with the dye and you kind of just mix those together it also came with instructions some gloves and um like a shampoo to get the dye out when you're finished so i seen this method on youtube and i thought it was pretty neat i thought it was quick and it would you know kind of speed up the process because i'm really trying i'm all about being quick right now like i wasn't trying to take all day to do my hair so i put it inside this like one gallon ziploc bag and i put my three bundles in there it's actually three bundles of 12 inch uh peruvian uh body wave i believe peruvian curly <laughs> but it's peruvian hair and yeah i used two full bottles of the dye on the three bundles and now i'm using a full bottle on my 360 closure and keep in mind that uh, you want to kind of stay away from the net as much as possible. So you see me going over this first part right here and then individually parting each section and going back in uh, with the dye and, you know, 
applying the dye a little bit more careful also keep in mind that uh, dye expands so when you apply it don't apply it all the way to the root because as the hair processes it will actually you know go to the root without touching the net because it doesn't it defeats the purpose if you bleach the knots and then re-dye the knots so be careful when you you know put the dye back on there also the reason why i'm dyeing the hair is because the hair came in a natural brown and i wanted a, a blue black jet black type of feel quick shout out to myra manuel she told me i should try the tea bag method and i did so for everybody out there who is new to wig making i would completely throw out all other methods including ritz dye and do only tea bag because this is the one that is the most natural for me and got me the closest to my skin tone okay now you see me um throwing my hair in the microwave because like i told you before i'm all about being quick today i started off with four minutes checking every minute um, just to see if the hair got pitch black and once I achieved that pitch black color I took my hair out just because I didn't want to wait that hour for it to process now you see me rinsing off the three bundles and um, I'm going to be using the shampoo that they put in the package I'm also going to be going in with my own personal toner a toner is really essential because not only does it remove the excess chemicals, it also traps in the excess color, um, so that's really important. And as you see here, the gloves that they gave me had a hole in it, so I had to switch to these blue ones because my finger turned pitch black. Sad face. Now, I know y'all are looking like, why is this girl by her um, dryer? Well, let me tell y'all, this is what I do when I'm not trying to uh, wait for my hair to dry. Go ahead and just, uh... that's what I do. You can throw fabric softener in there if you want to, but yeah, that's, that's what I do. And now that we have prepared all of our hair, we can uh, go ahead and begin, you know, crafting and putting together the wig. So I started off with a dome cap and my 360 frontal on a wig head and a wig stand. And now I'm going in with some pins to kind of hold everything down and in place. Make sure you really stretch the 360 frontal out so when you are done sewing, it fits in um, onto your head. And I'm just going in with a needle and thread and just sewing all the way around the 360 frontal. I'm using a blanket stitch um, about a centimeter apart um, as far as like the width goes just to make sure everything is really tight and will not come down later on I just wanted to give y'all a little bit closer view on how I sew everything down. And as I start getting uh, closer to the end, I start preparing myself to tie the thread um, about in about three knots. Yeah, I usually do about two to three knots just to make sure that the thread won't slip back through um, either the net or even the dome cap. So that's just for extra insurance, extra security. And like normal, like usual, like all videos and like before, we're just gonna go ahead and start sewing our three bundles in. It doesn't matter the order of the bundles because they're all 12 inches. So I just grabbed one um, and 
I'm doing the fold over method. When I get to the corners, um, I make sure I sew through the weft just to ensure that it will not come down. I use the pins to also hold the track in place. Um, I'm literally laying my tracks like right in front or even on top of each other because I want to pack on all three bundles. Really, if you have a 360 frontal, you really don't even need three bundles. I would say two and a half is good, but I wanted my wig to be full. I wanted my bob to be full. So I went ahead and squeezed all three bundles. Literally, you cannot, you will not find a part in my uh, unit because I sewed everything so close together so just keep that in mind the the farther apart you sew your tracks you sew your bundles um the less hair will be in the unit and the thinner that the hair will you know come out so right here this part um i split the track in half i ended up uh beginning to like double the track so I um, at the when it came to the end of the track I split it in half and I'm I laid one to go back to doing like single tracks instead of double and that one single one that I split and that I'm sewing right now I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times and then I'm gonna finish off with the last track that I just laid to the side and there's no really specific reason why I do this. Me personally, I kind of like the way it turns out because I don't like um, how bumpy hair turns out when you double the, the, the wefts all the way to the top because it's too much hair concentrated in one area. And you kind of want to taper the hair out as it gets to the top. You really don't want to have too much bulkiness at the top because that's when your unit starts to look you know unnatural so when I get to the top I start doing you know one one track at a time and not two the center towards the middle is where I do like double tracks and when my hair comes close to the frontal um, I start sewing the frontal and the hair together so I kind of do like um, what is that like a a circle stitch I'm not sure how to call it but um, I, I go I go around and um, I kind of do like the blanket stitch as well but I mainly go around to to attach them together as you can kind of see here Oh, another really important thing to keep in mind, I do not ever, never, do not ever cut my tracks. I do not cut my bundles. Um, I somehow always just get everything to fit um, exactly how I plan it. So I, I wouldn't advise cutting bundles. Also, when you don't cut your bundles, it minimizes shedding. So, yeah. Now you see me cutting off the excess dome cap on the inside because um, the 360 frontal is really what's um, going to be used to hold everything down. And the great thing about the 360 frontal is that it has like a um, like an elastic strap. So if the front 360 frontal is too loose for your head, you can tighten that strap, um, the adjustable strap. Now you see me going in with um, a razor, uh, like some hair clippers, and I'm making a very blunt cut across. Um, you see, well, you don't see me doing this, but I stop every so often to try on the uh, unit to make sure I'm not cutting too much. And I kind of started with a guideline as well. You didn't see that either. But now I am kind of giving it some layers and fixing everything up tidying all my work yeah 
So this is a finished product right here. I like how it came out. Um, I'm really not sure if I missed anything or forgot to cover anything. So please feel free to leave questions or comments in the comment section down below. Um, I make these videos to help y'all and also help myself as far as reference goes and you know if I want to recreate a look. So I mean this I mean this video here is to help all of us learn and just to kind of show y'all my process. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to, you know, thumbs up. And yeah, um, I, I just like sharing. <laughs> I like sharing with y'all. So y'all are my friends. And yeah, I definitely plan on making more hair videos. So if you'd like to see anything, you can also leave requests in the comment section down below. Okay, this video is officially over, but I wanted to say that this experience was both great and bad at the same time. It was a good experience. <laughs> the seller, absolutely phenomenal communication. And she got my hair to me in three days three days okay so this this was a good experience now as far as the process of getting it to this point you feel me to this point I don't know if y'all can the process <laughs> the process of getting it to where I am right now like baby let me tell you it wasn't easy okay i went through heck and back for this unit it was worth it <laughs> it was worth it look i think i think you know that this Girl, baby. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, leave y'all with uh, this sledge right here. Uh -huh. Leave y'all with all this sledge right here. Oh crap. You know what? It's time for me to go. See y'all next time. Bye. Oh wait, 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 wait. Y'all thought I was done. Y'all thought I was done. I forgot to show y'all this. When I um, dyed this wig, the gloves came with a with the hole in it already. You know, the glove came with the hole in it already. Okay, and um, this is what happened to my nail. Not only did it happen to this nail, it happened to this nail too. But this nail isn't as bad. But this nail right here, like my whole finger was pitch black. I'm not sure if I remember if I recorded it, but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, and, um, yeah, okay, <laughs> but, uh, no, but for real though, y'all, like, you know, make sure you wear nice gloves, because you can't have bomb-ass hair and ugly-ass fingers, <laughs> okay, no, but for real though, I'm gonna talk to y'all later, until next time, thank you for tuning into this video, uh, yeah, peace. Oh my gosh, my knee, my feet and my legs. Oh, I can't sit like that. Oh man, I started cramping. Oh crap, oh that hurt. Man, man I was cramping. But um, dang, shit. <laughs>
<laughs> I should have just stayed the way I was. Anyways. <laughs>